Are you still wondering if being a professional organizer is really for you? If you have one of those crazy newbie questions, I am all ears. Ladies, nothing is off limits. In today's episode, I am going to share with you a Q&A anonymous with one of my students who agreed to let you listen in on our call where I address some of those things that she was really worried about uh, when it came to starting her business. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. So I just genuinely would love to just kind of get to know you a little bit and know, like hear about your business and your dreams, your plans and anything else in between. So here's the deal. I, I have a website that says I'm a professional organizer. I haven't had a client yet and I'm not really sure that's what I want to do. Oh, okay. But I love your business model and if I am going to do it, I'm going to follow it, providing luxury, luxury services. My hesitation is, do I want to go into people's homes? I'm not sure mm. I'm comfortable with that. I understand. Tell me more about that. Not not having done it before is probably the biggest hurdle, but uh, it might be awkward. I can go into friends and, and family's homes and, and organize for them, but a complete stranger, maybe they won't be a stranger once I, once I meet with them. Huh? Well, you definitely get to know people really quickly in that scenario, certainly, because you're you're really in in their space and their story, whatever is going on with them, because it could be a variety of different types of situations. So tell me a little bit about what attracted you to the idea of organizing. Like what does appeal about it for you still? Because I, I can tell you still have a, a leaning that way. And, and this is interesting. I love, I mean, this is a great topic. Well, because of the way I live my life, I'm somewhat of a minimalist, but not not extreme I'm I don't know I kind of call it elegant minimalism okay I like I like nice things but I don't have a whole ton of them and I wouldn't be able to function any other way so I thought well I could help people who are struggling you know make money doing that but I don't for me it's easy to let go of things and I don't I don't know how to help people all their stuff that they've accumulated. I'm curious to know how, had, have you had challenges with people like just not wanting to get rid of things and they just want it organized? Hmm. Certainly. I, I mean, sometimes that's clear ahead of time. Like they kind of will say, I really am just looking for some like better organization systems and, you know, somebody else to just do it. Um, so sometimes you know that in advance. The challenge is when you don't know in advance that when they say that they're ready to get rid of stuff and, you know, especially if like you have a husband and wife who are working together and they say one thing when they're together, but then separately they're like kind of on different pages. And the person who seemed really motivated about decluttering is actually not so willing to part with things it, when it comes down to it. Like you're in the session and they're like, well, I don't know. And it is a challenge because we as organizers, we can't make that ultimate decision for them. We're just sort of a, a person to help facilitate the process of the decision making. But ultimately, it is up to them. So that is something, you know, I hear you saying it's kind of a concern when maybe your idea of how it could be for them doesn't match up with like what they're willing to actually do. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Also, safety. Okay, so <laughs> I purchased a book about, it's called Born to Organize by uh -huh. Sarah Peterson. Yes. And a uh, great book. Bought that like a year ago, read it cover to cover, and kind of got freaked out about the safety considerations when, when you go into people's homes. And then during your email sequence, when I joined your list, like just a couple weeks ago, you said something about, in one of the emails, you said, <laughs> stepping on a pine cone 
Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's, a, it's a dead rat or something in the basement. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. That freaked you out. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Those uh, certainly are the exception more than the rule, but things do happen and are, are a surprise. It's not a situation that you can control and know everything in advance. And maybe there is a little bit of a, you know, an ickiness factor of, you know, even in a nice home that you're working with stuff that might be dusty and there are surprises like, unfortunately, <laughs> the dead rat carcass. Did that really happen? It happened to one of my students, not to me. But yes, you know, that she accidentally stepped on it. And of course, like the client is like apologizing so much, but you, there are definitely like things that happen like that that give you a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, but then like you realize it is not always glamorous. Let's just say that way. Makes sense. Tell me more about the things that make you nervous, especially going back to the safety considerations. You just never know, you know, we live in interesting times mm -hmm. um, and just because somebody appears to be you know, kind. Yeah, yeah. So then I thought, okay, so I'll do this virtually. I'll, I'll provide virtual organizing services. Mm hmm okay. And my website says that I often have to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I haven't promoted my myself at all yet. Okay. I have, okay. I have business cards. I have a company name. I have everything. I, okay. But I haven't, I haven't launched. Okay. And I'm not sure how much of it is mindset on my part. I know that has a lot to do with it. Well, it certainly sounds like there's some, you know, truly real concerns that you have about, you, like you said, being in other people's homes, working with them to actually accomplish the job, potential safety issues, potential like gross things that occasionally happen. Like I'll share with you, you know, I don't know if you're a pet person, but I am, well, I heard your dog barking. I'm not a pet person. So when there is occasionally, you know, a, a dog or a cat like uses the bathroom in the house and that has to be cleaned up, I'm like, I'm not going in that room. Like I, I can't personally handle that. So I think you definitely have to think about the situations that you are comfortable with and not comfortable with. And because I know that I am not really comfortable working around pets and dogs, especially because they're just kind of like unpredictable, I make it a part of my contract while I'm in the home or while we're doing the session, like, we, you know, please arrange for your pets to be somewhere else just so that we can really focus on the job. So I built that into my parameters for working and, you know, made sure to ask a few questions on the phone before I ever go to somebody's house for the first time to try to assess for not just dogs, obviously, but other, any other potential red flags before I I just, I don't just take an inquiry on my website and say, all right, I'll be there tomorrow. And, you know, go into an address I don't know anything about. I take a, a the time to vet them as much as possible by talking on the phone and making sure that I understand their situation and making sure that it's not like a, a true hoarding situation that I'm going into beforehand because I know that me on my own, that I'm not going to be the qualified person to deal with that. So a lot of the, uh, you, as, just like you said, and I think this is a very valid point, the safety considerations in particular, you can't foresee every possible thing. But in our, in our group, you know, we're always talking about making sure people know where you are, like making sure your family or friends know where you are when you're on your jobs. We definitely advocate researching the person as much as possible, even if that's just looking them up on Facebook and kind of saying like, yes, this is a real person or, you know, being able to locate them on Google in some way, you know, we always say there's nothing wrong with researching your clients a little bit because you know they did the same to you before they probably even called you because they want to make sure just the same way like that you're not a person who's out to like <laughs> scope out their house and burglarize right. their stuff. So yeah, those, the basic safety precautions are definitely a part of it. And, and I think awareness about that is really important because especially when organizers are really eager to have work that might make them overlook those small red flags that they're not noticing because they're just so excited to have a potential client. So I just want to validate, you know, it's not just a mindset thing. It sounds like these are some real concerns for you that it sounds like are keeping you from fully launching your business. Thanks, Jen. This has been, this has been really tough for, for me to work out on my own. 
Yeah. And I'm definitely not telling you like you're, you're imagining it all in your head because occasionally crazy stuff does happen. Certainly. I would, since it sounds like this is something that you really want to do in some way, I'm wondering if there is a way for you to move forward a little more slowly by only taking people like on a referral basis. Like they have to know somebody who knows somebody that you are already connected with. So just so that you can at least get more comfortable with the whole process before you are, you know, going into and taking inquiries from like perfect strangers off the internet. How would that, how would that feel? That, that sounds like a solid plan. I live in in a, I consider it remote uh, area. There's 35,000 in the county, the nearest town is, is an hour away from where, where we live. Uh, so that's the pool of clients I have to work with. Yeah, I think you said you have, you've done a lot of the basic business setup stuff and you've made your website and everything. So have you told any of your friends and family yet that you are wanting to do this? Or yes. that you are doing this? Okay. So I wonder if you could, instead of holding yourself up by feeling like you have to like launch out to the world, if you could just sort of do kind of that, like, Hey, you know, tell the people that, you know, I am launching this business. I do have a website and I would love, you know, if you know anyone who will be, you could kind of give them some potential scenarios. Like if you know anyone who might be moving soon or who might be, you know, helping a parent downsize, I would love for you to give them my information um, and let them know that you know me and kind of build on those relationships. A lot of business advice is all about making a big deal about having a brand new business and doing an advertising. But when you are coming from the perspective or the, or the state of mind you have right now where you are a little bit nervous about getting started and getting out there, I think it might make more sense to do that, like work through who you know first um, to, get, to get clients that aren't actually friends or family members. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does, it yeah. does. And I'm- yeah, it sounds that sounds more comfortable to me. Absolutely. And that can be a very valid way to go about it. And I always tell people you can you can grow as slowly as you want to. And I tell people this, they kind of get overwhelmed about marketing and especially when they are busy, like they have clients and they're just like, oh, like at the end of the day, I'm I'm so tired and I don't have the energy to go you know, meet and network and do the things that you're supposed to do. And I say, I'm like, well, the best marketing is always through a referral. So as long as you're doing a, uh, a great job and delivering great service to the clients that you are working with, and then you are intentionally letting them know, just say, you know, my business really thrives on referrals. So the best way to thank me is to let someone else know um, in, in the area that, you know, what about what I do. And your clients finding your next clients for you is the best and actually most time efficient way to market anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, totally makes sense. It's, it's, it's always ideal when you hear about something new from a friend than when you read it in a magazine or see an ad. The best way to hear about something is from a friend who's like, you, I met this woman, she changed my life. You know what I mean? And you're like, give me your number. You know, tell her you know me. It's that kind of thing. I think that that could be, that could be really perfect for you. This is so good. This is so, so helpful. Because it is about, it is about helping people changing their lives. and. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, how do people who are generally disorganized, do they, have they, in your experience, have they called you back to organize again and again and again? That's a good question. I had a few clients that, yeah, they considered themselves like lifers, <laughs> you know, they're like, I'm going to need you forever. You know, don't, don't ever, don't ever give away my spot. But you know, they would keep kind of like a, you know, once a month or every other month, they're like, well, we'll just plan on, we'll just plan on seeing you next time to kind of maintain a sense of order. You can accomplish so much when you do a major like clean out basically, or clean up and organization. I think it just takes a while before they realize, Hey, I don't have to maintain this on my own. I can actually just keep calling Jen or keep calling and have her, you know, have her come back. But I didn't do a particularly great job of proposing those maintenance type of packages with my clients, but I definitely teach that as part of my class because now it makes so much more sense to me. Like it makes so much more sense to go ahead and suggest, to go ahead and suggest like, Hey, I know you're going to do great with this on your own. 
and we've worked really hard to get all these systems in order and just let them know, like, I am going to follow up with you in a month just to see how things are working for you. But you could just go and say, if you want uh, to have me, you know, come in and do a quarterly kind of maintenance or even once a year maintenance, just know that I do that. And they'll be like, oh, okay. You know, that takes a lot of pressure off of them to keep it perfect on their own when the reality is that's not like it's not likely that now that you've organized them one time that they're just going to stay that way forever mm -hmm. so you do want you do want to go back to this client you know here's the thing too is you wouldn't just do this with anybody I think you would do this with the people that you really enjoyed working with and you're like I want more of you and I want to continue being of service to you you know they, I have had difficult clients I've had people that I did not want to see again it's fulfilling to do the work but the personality management is like <laughs> I don't want to continue being like in close quarters with them and so when you find something that you really love that's when you want to continue gently following up you don't want to be pushy and salesy but gently following up with the person especially somebody you really enjoyed working with gives you the opportunity not only to work for them again but you want to kind of duplicate them as a client and the best way to do that is for them to refer their friends to you which is why you know I do talk a lot about referrals in inside the course because that doesn't require technology it just requires the relationship building and the consistency of following up with people sorry I'm giving you I'm like unloading on you but like I feel like I have so many good ideas for, for you <laughs> Um, cause I, you know, I don't want you to have a website and then stay stuck. Even if you only took one client every other month, it could just be a sometimes thing for you. Like you don't have to get started and go, go nuts on it. Like right from the beginning. Yeah. Like, like getting married to it, you know, right. It can be a very, it can be a casual part-time business. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you that even though I do have students who they want to grow their business as big as possible and have a team and really do that, that I have just as many, if not more people that are very happy with it being just them. It's a solo business. They don't have to worry about managing others and, um, you know, taking on these huge projects with these huge deadlines. It's just like, hey, you know, you're, you're going in and you've got certain clients that you've been with for a long time and you see them once a week, it's a very comfortable pace for them and they don't want to grow it bigger and bigger or try to quit their job. Like they're just like, I'm happy with this being just a side business that I enjoy. I, I'm sure I'll feel so much better after I have my first client. Maybe I'll decide it's not for me. I won't know unless I do it. True. I mean, absolutely. It's something you can dip your toe in the water and, you know, maybe even once you have your first client, then that's when you say, okay, like I can do the virtual organizing and I can, you know, like you said, you could, you could start kind of marketing that by, I don't know if you have started any social media pages for your business at all. The thing I always say about virtual organizing is that because you will be in a, like a Skype call or FaceTime or something, just like what you and I are doing right now, because you're going to be in that type of video contact with the person um, in order to do virtual organizing, it makes a lot of sense to do videos for your business, either on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram because if people feel like they have gotten to know you through video that you have put out there online then the next natural step is for them to you know if, if they know you have a virtual organizing option then they're like oh well being in a call with you and talking to you and you helping me walk through that decision making process it's like the next like natural step to them because mm -hmm. then they're it's like you talking to me right now. You're like probably watched a video of me before, but now that we're talking, it feels so normal. Yeah, it's totally, yeah. I know, it's so weird, but cool. That's the way you market virtual organizing. If you were to, if you were to go that route, I mean, I have to say, it solves a lot of the issues about being in a small town and you know the safety stuff, obviously. <laughs> I mean, somebody creepy can get on a video, but all you gotta do is press power okay. off. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of benefit to that. I want to tell you or make a note of this. If you have not, have you ever watched the video that on, it's on my YouTube channel. And I know you said you just were on my mailing list a few weeks ago, but I do have a video on YouTube with, it's an, it's an interview with Nikki Boyd. I did see have that. Have you seen I that did. one? And and her, like, she is the sweetest person in the world anyway, but her growing her YouTube channel just through showing her own house. And then when she launched her virtual organizing option, of course, her having 300,000 or whatever YouTube subscribers really helped. 
they wanted to work with her because they, you know, they like the way she is and they like her style. And she, you know, she can almost like write her own ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's like, well, I'm going to launch virtual organizing. Well, people wanted to pay the money to have her help them versus them hiring somebody to come in. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of benefits to it because then it's cheaper for them. You can work around you know, maybe their weird work schedule. Maybe people want help, but they're not comfortable with a person coming into their house because it feels like, not necessarily that they'll be judged, but you know how like when you have somebody come over and you feel like you have to really kind of be a host and take care of them when really the organizer is there to sort of like soothe you and support you. And, and not everybody's like really comfortable with that dynamic. Like it's going to be the right fit for the client to want someone to come in and be like, just, you know, help me, help me look at this mess. Right. But so maybe would want to work virtually would be like, okay, I, I want the face-to-face -face contact, but maybe it's just, it's easier for me. Like I, I want to be the one to touch my own stuff. I don't necessarily want somebody pushing me to go fast. I just really want the support. Does that make sense? It does. So it's a little, it's a different, it's a different type of client that you've got to market it to, but it could be, I mean, it could be ideal work from your standpoint because you get to really still be there for the person and show your heart. And oh, by the way, it's a lot less physical on you. <laughs> They've got to be motivated to get it done. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.